Hello everybody, welcome to today's uh, call. I'm gonna be making a dandelion and burdock elixir. And um, I'm just gonna wait for a few more minutes uh, for more of you to show up. Uh, can we do a quick sound check? Angela, if you could let me know if you can hear me okay while I'm getting um, prepared for all the, the props that we need for today. Yeah, so uh, I just came back from, uh, just last night I came back from, um, I just wanna make sure, sorry, let me just make sure that I am on my, on the right page. Ooh. Um, can you guys confirm you watching me on Hormon's Balance website, not my private page? <laughs> I just want to be sure that that is the case uh, before I get started. Hello, happy Friday. Uh, okay, good. So I am on Hormones Balance website. You know, um, many of you have asked me before, what is the camera that I'm using uh, for doing these calls? And a lot of times, um, awesome. Thanks, thanks so much, Angela, for the sound check. And um, I know many of you are doing your life, uh, Facebook lives as well with your communities and. So the camera that I'm using is called Mevo, Mevo, um, I think it depends on who you ask, M-E-V-O, and, and it syncs up with your iPhone, and what happens is that I can, for example, zoom into, you know, a specific thing like, uh, in this case here, all the equipment, uh, I mean, all the ingredients, you know, I can just go in um, to my face or can zoom out. Ideally, you want to have somebody doing that for you, but you can do it yourself as well. It's not a cheap camera, but it's totally worth it. Anyway, so we're getting more people online, which is awesome. Uh, just want to tell you, I just came back from California. I was there for four days on a mastermind. And um, I always come back really tired after masterminds, but not this one. I am a little bit, you know, <laughs> but um, it made a huge difference to be outdoors a lot. And so we took advantage of the sun, being outdoors. A lot of the times, a lot of sessions were held outside. All of us are in the health space. So everybody was a somebody in the health space, <laughs> um, especially on, in the online area. So yeah, it was really awesome. Just being outside makes such a huge difference in, in getting that vitamin D, getting that sun exposure, uh, being in the fresh air instead of being cooked up in a hotel room. We were in a barn. It's like a barn that got turned into a beautiful um, conference room, if you like, but with natural light, with natural airflow, huge difference. All right, you guys, so uh, let me know where you're from. And, um, you know, this everything I'm always making is going to be supporting the hormonal health. But if you follow me for a while, you know it's not just the hormones. It's really supporting the liver, supporting the kidneys, supporting your digestion, supporting stabilizing your sugar levels, all of that, and giving your body a lot of really good nutrition. All of that is going to be the foundation for hormones. Um, New Orleans one day saying, awesome some really great food I go to find gluten-free I went to New Orleans that was a hard one but I just adored the food and just such lovely people um, and, and let me know are you new here to this community or have you been following uh, these Friday calls on a regular basis and if you are new my name is Magdalena I'm the founder of Hormones Balance I teach women how to rebalance their hormones with nutrition so let's dive in since there's more of you now um, on the call and um, as promised, I want to show you how to make an elixir from Canada. There we go. Um, a really difficult name, Saskatchewan uh, from Canada. Awesome. Well, welcome. And um, so this one is a really great elixir that has the main ingredients we're going to be playing with are these two things. So let me zoom in here so you can see them better. Um, and that's going to be your dandelion and your burdock. Can you see that I'm getting everything in, you know, like in um, in bulk form, right? And not just that, as I explained that on my call before, uh, that I, when I was making something else, I think it was ashwagandha latte a couple of weeks ago. You know, can you see that I'm using that uh, the I'm using this in um, powder root form? And, um, and so it's not ground yet. We're gonna ground it up together in just a second. But I'm using this from, hello there, Greta from South California. I just came back from there. Um, we were in Santa Eva Inez, just outside of Santa Barbara. 
And, um, and so the same thing um, is for burdock, where I'm using the whole root. That is, well, not a whole root, it's, it's basically chunks of the root, but it has not been uh, ground yet. And the reason why you want to do that is because it retains a lot more freshness in this form. Um, but also, you know, a lot of the, the reason why it smells, that kind of food smells amazing, is because that essential oils in these, um, in food like this, medicinal food like that, is really where the nutrition or the, the properties, the healing properties, the medicinal properties lie. You know when you grind something and then you smell it like a month later and it, you, kind of, can, you kind of go, let me zoom out again, you kind of, when you grind something and you, and you look at the, you know, you smell it again after a month, you're like, what is that, right? <laughs> it smells a little bit like ground furniture. So this is the reason why we're gonna freshly grind it and use it in our elixir today as a freshly ground, uh, in a freshly ground form. So what's the big deal about dandelion and what's the big deal about burdock? Um, and we're also gonna be adding a couple of other things and I'll, 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 we'll do that as we go. So dandelion, by the way, this is a roasted, can you see this, the word here? I just, you know, it's important to label things well. So this is a roasted dandelion. And, um, and that really, gives you that beautiful coffee-like taste, but without any caffeine in it, right? Burdock traditionally in traditional um, uh, herbal medicine, um, as in Western herbal medicine, has been predominantly used for liver support. So, you know, people who are, for example, alcoholics even, I mean, I'm talking about extremes here, but it doesn't mean that if you're not an alcoholic, you wouldn't get a benefit. Absolutely, everybody needs support for the liver, especially if you're 30 and above, that organ has done a lot of work in the past 30 years and it does need some support. So, but I'm just giving you an extreme example here that dandelion root originally has been used for people with, um, you know, with se severe liver problems. Dandelion root was been used for that. Now, dandelion leaf, on the other hand, is more of a kidney tonic, where dandelion root is more of a liver support. Um, the other thing is that dandelion really helps a lot with is, hi there, Robin. Um, is that it is a bitter herb, so, and that's why it's got a lot of perils with coffee without being caffeinated, which is awesome, right? But anything bitter, if you watch my Cookie for Balance workshop, you know that anything bitter stimulates bile production, and bile is really important. So many of us do not have sufficient bile. How do you know you don't have sufficient bile? If you eat something pretty heavy, like oily, a lot of protein, and it sits in your stomach forever, right? It could be due to low stomach acid or low bile output. You see food particles in your poop. Um, you really do not want to touch, like you have this aversion almost to um, protein, like animal protein meat, right? As well as oily food. Um, another thing is, you know, if your poop is yellow in color or yellowish, um, then it also could be a sign of low bile output. And um, because bile actually is what gives the poop brown color, right? So those little that's why that is so. What's the big deal about bile and hormones? So while you're taking a guess, um, I'm gonna just tell you about burdock. And burdock is such an incredible um, herb as well. And I wanna just, you know what, it's got so many properties that I, I couldn't even remember everything. So I just printed it out. Actually, this is from WebMD, which you know, WebMD is conservative source of information, right? Uh, but here it is. People take burdock to increase urine flow, so that's a great kidney um, tonic, kill germs, reduce fever, purify their blood. It's also used to treat colds, cancer, anorexia nervosa, gastrointestinal complaints, uh, joint pain, such, such as rheumat uh, rheumatism, gout, uh, bladder infections, complications with syphilis, hopefully you don't have that. A lot of it is also skin conditions, including acne and psoriasis. Murder can also help with high blood pressure, heightening of the arteries, uh, as well as liver disease. So, and it also says here that people who use burdock uh, also see an increase in sex drive. So, although there's other better herbs than, than herbs than that, um, we'll do another segment on sexual, um, you know, herbs a little bit um, another time. So, I'm using these two because they really pair up really nicely. They support each other really beautifully. Uh, burdock, I will have to tell you, it's not my favorite herb the way it tastes. 
So what I had found is that equalizing that with dandelion because of the smoky, or I shouldn't say, it's actually not smoky, it's the roasted flavor that dandelion brings in is really wonderful. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grind our, both of these lovely uh, herbs. And the way I'm gonna do this is um, in terms of amounts, here's the thing you guys with amounts, right? Is that you kind of wanna, you, I mean, you know, it's, I would say the max, and we're making two, by the way, this is a, a serving of two. You want to do it in a way that you do not consume more than a teaspoon um, and a half each. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use two teaspoons of this, of, uh, of, of this, is, this is dandelion. And then I'm going to use a teaspoon, actually I'm going to use a teaspoon and a half of uh, burdock and let's do three teaspoons of, bird, of dandelion. There we go. Okay, so one more time. So basically, one, I'm using one tablespoon of dandelion root, which is the roasted version, and then a teaspoon and a half, so half of that burdock. And that's a really good proportion to use. Freshly grinding it, so give it a second. I'm using a coffee grinder, but do not grind your coffee with your herbs because it's gonna overpower, it's gonna take off, take over uh, the entire flavor of your herbs. So let's give it a second. Okay, it's gonna be a bit like a magic potion. Can you see that? <laughs> Okay, so freshly ground, smells wonderful. I don't know if you guys can see the, the powder um, just filling in the, the, the whole kitchen. Okay, and so I'm gonna be using, um, as usual, my magic bullet, because I really love that. And so um, as a base, I'm gonna be going back to coconut milk uh, water and using the elixir, um, the base for, the, for this elixir. A couple of you had mentioned in the past that you don't like coconut milk, and that's perfectly fine. And so what you can do is, you know, last week I was teaching how to make um, any dairy-free milk that doesn't have to be coconut. You can make it out of, you know, you name it. It could be almonds, it could be uh, hazelnuts, it could be macadamia, uh, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, all these different make beautiful milks are totally possible. Uh, but also on top of that, I also showed you how to make tiger nut milk, which is actually my favorite because it's not a nut, it's hypoallergenic, it's full of probiotics. And so many people do develop, you know, um, allergies and intolerances towards nuts, especially the, if you're consuming too many of them. So tiger nut flour, tiger nut milk was a really great alternative. And if you wanna know where to find it, Angela, could you post the link to that um, call last week that I did on Friday on my page, Hormones Balance Q&A with Magdalena? And it's gonna be, it's right there. Okay. So the way to make this elixir is really, really simple. And that is, I'm gonna be using, this is, I'm making this for two, right? So you just reduce it by half if it's just you. I'm using one cup of full fat coconut milk. I'm using um, native forest because it is BPA free. And I really like that because we wanna have as little chemicals entering our body as possible. And then I just freshly boil some water. So we're gonna use two cups of water. You know, that, that milk is really, is really quite fatty. So, you know, it's, um, it will be a little bit too heavy, I feel, if we use only the coconut milk. It's just way too much fat in one place. And, um, and that's basically, the next thing we're gonna do is, just put our lovely burdock and freshly ground burdock and dandelion straight into um, our initial bullet. And so now talking about a couple of additions I wanna inspire you with. And so a couple of things you can do. The first thing is, you know, that I, I wanna just mention is I love to put some protein in. Um, I'm using Bulletproof protein, uh, collagen, sorry, rather collagen powder just because it's really awesome. 
I'm using two tape, two scoops here. Uh, great for your bones, great for your skin. People, you know, feel like their nails and hair starts regrowing and growing much faster after they add collagen into whoops into their drinks, um, smoothies, etc. And it doesn't have any flavor, so you can really beautifully mask it in a drink like this. And then the other thing I want to inspire you with is adding, you know, cacao. As you can see, I always love everything in bulk, right? And so this is my cacao. You can also use, um, can you show up a close up of that protein? So it's a collagen protein, sure. Um, there you go, it's from Bulletproof. You can get it online uh, very easily. And for those of you who live in the United States, I know Alex, you don't live in the, oh no, Alex lives in the US, so I know you're French, but you live in the US. So many places now are beginning to distribute it, like Whole Foods, at least here in Colorado, um, is selling it. So the other thing I wanna just mention is cacao. The reason why I love cacao in this particular elixir is because cacao is full of magnesium. And if you do this drink and you support your liver, like five days, for example, if you're still masturbating, you support your liver, start drinking this elixir five days before your period, you will see significant change in your PMS symptoms because you're doing two major things. One is you're supporting your liver with that dandelion drink, which then helps to get rid of that estrogen that is often the main cause of having terrible PMSs. And on the other hand, you're giving yourself a really solid dose of magnesium from cacao that is going to relax, but also magnesium plays, I and mean, magnesium has got 500 different um, chemical, biochemical functions in the body. And uh, most of us are depleted, that's why you crave chocolate, but we're making this very low in sugar, which is really awesome. Um, if you don't, I've heard that if you don't love protein powder, but you don't feel like thiosine is a different things. I'm not, I need to look at that question again. I'm sorry, I didn't really get that. So um, what I'm doing is, you know, it's really up to you how much you wanna put in here. So let's start off with, I'll do like two heaping tablespoons, maybe three um, of cacao. And um, that's pretty much, oh no, okay, let's, let me, I forgot about a sweetener. So, you know, I don't wanna, I don't, I don't like going crazy with sugar. You probably know that by now, right? So there's a couple of things we can do. One is the sweetener I like to use is our, is the coconut nectar. And the reason why I like coconut nectar is for two main reasons. Number one is that it doesn't have very much fructose in it and it doesn't, that way it does not impair your sugar, your liver, unlike agave, right? So agave is not a sweetener I would recommend to anyone. Number two, is that it is not processed. That's why you can see it's kind of thick and brown and it's, there's very little processing that took place here out of, in a cocktail coconut nectar. And number three, which is also really great, it's got a low GI, a fairly low GI index, which means it's not gonna shoot up your uh, sugar levels up too high. So for something like this, I would use probably a tablespoon of the sweetener. And so that's like a teaspoon and a half per person, which is very reasonable. The one thing you could do is to amplify the sweetness. So what I would do is like one, two, three, four drops. It's like, this like four teaspoons of a sweetener, but because of the nectar, it's gonna be hiding, it's gonna be hidden. The steam is gonna be hidden really well, yet it's gonna bring out the sweetness of this drink really in a beautiful way. So, let me put this in uh, on a little spin in our magic bullet here. And gosh, we're almost done. <laughs> All right. this five days before your period, um, you will significantly, you see a significant um, change in your uh, PMS symptoms if you are suffering from PMSs. And if you're going through menopause, you can drink this anytime and it's gonna be hugely supportive. So let me tell you about the taste. 
<clears throat> you do know I'm kind of winging it, right? <laughs> Here's the thing. I put quite a bit of cacao in it. I did put three ta heaping tablespoons and it did overtake pretty much the taste of an entire drink. If I was to redo this, I'll probably put a little bit less so that it gives the dandelion a chance to shine and come out. It doesn't change the nutritional value of this drink, but it does change it. It, it makes it more like a mocha, you know, kind of flavor. And that's really what it tastes like. It tastes like a mocha, you know, um, without the dairy, without all the incredible sugar that you put, you, they put in the commercial uh, chains, right? Like, you know who? And um, yeah, and it's just so full of goodness, right? Awesome drink. Now, I want to just highlight a couple of things. Um, w one more thing, actually, about the dandelion. Could you drink this daily, like for breakfast? Alex is asking. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. There is no reason why not. The, the thing that I just want to highlight, um, that sometimes some medicinal foods can give you a side reaction. So, you know, like I want to just um, be upfront with you that after I made the ashwagandha latte, a few people had tried it. Many people had tried it. And two people had a really bad reaction to it. And then they say, you know, um, uh, and it, so it turned out that ashwagandha is actually f um, a, a nitrate. So if you're avoiding, so if anybody who's avoiding nitrates or if nitrates like tomatoes, eggplants, you know, potatoes and all that um, are giving you body pains and hot flashes and whatnot, then ashwagandha is definitely not something you would want to be adding. So that's something I forgot to mention. So let me tell you about a little bit of a precaution with dandelion root and burdock. They're both very high on FODMAPs. FODMAPs stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, polysaccharides, monosaccharides, different kinds, those are different kinds of sugars that are found in very healthy food. And the for people who have IBS or people who have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, actually respond to these kind of foods, often, not always, with just getting really bloated. And it does create a flare-up. So in some ways, you can become your own detective and say, you know what, I'm gonna try this and see what happens. If it makes you bloated, that's a really great indicator saying, you know what, something is going on. It's either I've got a pretty bad B uh, IBS or I need to work on my SIBO. So use this as an opportunity to find out more about yourself more than anything else. I have to lower my ATL level, so that will be a great drink, right? Um, yes, so AL ALT, are enzymes that are found, that are measured in through blood work when you go and see your doctor and they do the whole complete metabolic panel. Um, ALT and AST are the two markers for enzymes in the liver. And by the way, so this is really helpful for what you mentioned, the, the, for, for elevated liver markers. Uh, but also, you know, one of the things I would strongly suggest is to get off sugar. That's a huge one that impairs uh, your liver function and the other thing is if you're eating out a lot, then also slow down doing that because a lot of times the inflammatory oils that you're using like canola oil and soy oil and peanut oil, right? Or just some cheap vegetable oils. And most of the time, you know, believe it or not, you go even to good restaurants, a lot of times they sting on good oils, even the good restaurants. And so that can create huge inflammation and um, cause issues. Fresh roots, uh, they are fresh roots, right? Once harvested. No, they are not. They actually, I mean, like uh, I was showing, you can see them. Um, you know, I've never really worked with a fresh one because I've never seen them being available. Dandelion roots, yeah, but this is roasted. So you can see this is definitely dry. Um, and I don't think a fresh one can be ground as easily as what I did. Um, and dandelion doesn't have as much of a nice flavor if it's not roasted. So uh, I would this recipe that I was showing you uses dried, uh, dried um, herbs. So one more thing I want to show you as a little bonus for today is, um, and for those of you who are asking for a recipe, I will just bang it out and post it in the comments uh, down below this video. So one more thing I want to tell you about, which I actually com completely forgot about is um, cordyceps mushrooms. So I just, um, over, there you go. So this is how, this is the one that I'm recommending. And so before you run off and buy them, let me just tell you about them first because they're really interesting mushrooms. I completely forgot about them until, you know, over the mastermind that I was telling you about, whenever I had a little bit of free time or on the flight back, um, up and down, I, um, I read 
my friend Mark Ryan's book called How to Heal Hashimoto's. It's a really interesting book because he goes, uh, he covers angles of Hashimoto's that other people haven't covered. So as you know, you know, Dr. Karazian, Isabella Wentz, right, are some of the leaders in the space. And what Mark has done, he's covered so well the angle of herbs, the angle of acupressure in different points, uh, qigong, ex gentle exercise, meditation, how to work with an acupuncturist, um, but also the conversations you, you ha we have with ourselves in a very non-dogmatic, very um, attainable way to a Western mind. I really had a great time reading this book. And one of the things that, and Angela, could you post the link to the book? The book just came out. Um, we're gonna post the link of where to get the book. Uh, and Mark also, apart from the book, has got like a companion workshop that you can actually watch him do his Qigong exercises and stuff like that. I've just learned about, I've learned things from here I, I didn't actually didn't know about. Uh, one way to stimulate, for example, your thyroid is to, there is a point here where your collarbone um, meets, um, yeah, it's, it's somewhere around here. Anyway, it's, it's explained in the book and if you saw my newsletter, if you're on my mailing list, I did send out a newsletter this morning um, that actually shows how to pr put the pressure on these points. I don't want to mess it up. I think it's, 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 yeah, anyway, it's, it really explained really well in that. So get to your newsletter to look at that you're going exercise um, and the pressure point where to, where to activate and, and stimulate your thyroid. Really awesome stuff. So one of the things that Mark talks about here, which I completely forgot about, are the cordyceps mushrooms. And cordyceps mushrooms have been used in China for a very long time. I've heard about them many times. A lot of, you know, I've lived in China for four years, two years in Hong Kong and two years in, in Shanghai. And cordyceps mushrooms has always been something talked about. Um, and is only now making a big splash into Western medicine. And so I want to just, um, a Western world, I should say, not Western medicine. So there is a part of a chapter here that he, um, he discusses cordyceps, which is a fungus that grows on the bodies of silkworms. And, you know, before you freak out and you think like, oh my God, what is she talking about now, right? This is disgusting. Uh, one of the great things about cordyceps, it actually tastes like chocolate. I kid you not, it tastes like chocolate. So we could have just, you know, making, we, we could have made that elixir instead of using cacao for magnesium, we could have added that. Uh, that was always, there's always an option. So that's so beautiful about this elixir, right? Is that you can make it however way you want and just pick the right things that resonate with you on that day. So let me read um, an excerpt on cordyceps. He said it actually has a chocolatey taste. It also helps the body make glutathione. In case you're not familiar, glutathione is the master um, antioxidant in the body that really sweeps through the body, major, major detoxifier. People with MTHR5 mutations like myself um, really do well with additional or really high doses of glutathione. And so, you know, this is something that these little cordyceps, these mushrooms actually facilitate. She, then he says, this stuff is amazing. It is used traditionally to tonify kidney yang. Remember earlier we spoke about kidney yang being the source of endocrine function? It also tonifies the lungs and dissolves phlegm. Well, since cordyceps help the body make and use glutathione, It is an antibiotic and it's got anti-cancer properties. It relieves asthma. It stimulates the immune function. It stimulates adrenal glands. It has also been found to increase platelets. Um, all this from a fungus that grows on silkworms. Yum. <laughs> so get the book. A really awesome addition to your, uh, if you have a thyroid condition. And quite honestly, the stuff that Mark teaches here is anybody with a compromised immune system, anybody who's got adrenal, because he covers adrenals, he covers lungs, he covers kidneys, brain, um, the intestines, right? It's, 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 I would just really say it's not just for Hashimoto's patients, but anybody with a compromised immune system or if your hormones are all over the place and you're interested in Qigong, Chinese medicine, Chinese herbs, easily available, this is the way to go. So Angela, can you post the link to the cordyceps, these beautiful mushrooms, and um, so when I read the book, 
right? I was just like, oh my God, I completely forgot about these mushrooms. I gotta get that. So I did, and, um, and I ordered them on Amazon right away, and um, um, we have an Amazon link for you here. Um, and, you know, let me show you how they look. So you're a little bit more familiar. They're basically brownish in color, like yellowish in color, really. Okay. Actually, the last one I had was a mix that was mixed with other mushrooms. So just to show you, it's actually very yellow in color. Um, this is how it looks. The sister cordyceps mushrooms. And you don't, here's the thing, this packet is not cheap at all. Um, the good news is that you don't have to use a lot in order to get good results. And, um, you know, it's a little bit of like a Western mentality. I'm going to use a lot in order to feel a difference. No. Um, you know, the, in fact, the serving size is recommended to be between half a teaspoon to a teaspoon a day. And like with everything potent, I would recommend for you, especially if you're sensitive, start off with something as little as a quarter of a teaspoon first, put that into a drink, and you can make it exactly, you can add it to that wonderful elixir that we had just made together, um, and uh, or put it, put it in a smoothie, it doesn't really matter how, as long as you get that in. Okay, so that's what I have for you today. Um, I did see questions coming in and I did not have the time to read them. So why don't you guys repose them while, and I'm gonna stay for a few more minutes. Let's see what time is it. Yeah, I'm gonna stay for five more minutes and, um, and answer your questions and see what's coming up for you. Who's gonna try to make this? Um, or who has tried dandelion before and started getting bloated and you're like, this is, this is, my body is responding to it. Uh, how will you know that the mushrooms are working? Great question. You know, Tina is asking. That's a really great question. Let me just take a sip of this. First of all, you know, the first thing that you want to start looking out for is if anything that's making you tired, um, you definitely want to stop. So in case if you're having whatever reaction to the cordyceps, I've never seen people having a reaction, but in, in case you do, then you're gonna stop. So just overall body responses. How, you know, how it makes you feel is like when people take high doses of glutathione, it amplifies your detoxification, right? So the predominant thing would be you start feeling more energy. Um, after a drink like this, you feel like gently lifted and not tired, right? Um, you would start, you know, having less like body odor. A lot of times that's the other thing that starts happening. Uh, more clarity of mind. Those are some of the big things. And, oh no, I just missed another question. Shoot. <laughs> and I can't get out of here uh, to do that. I will try to respond to you um, after this call. I'm going to get on Facebook comments and then answer those questions there um, if I don't see them. Let's see what else is coming in. I'll just repost your question one more time. It was like a longer one just now. It just disappeared. So who, who here is going to be making them? I'm making um, the elixir that I was showing you just now. Uh, there's a little bit of a delay, so by the time you guys hear me talk about posting a question, then there is, uh, it takes a while to, to get to it. Uh, sounds great, I will try. Shirley Nassain Smith, great. And um, another question I have for you. So just so that you know, there's going to be, I mentioned that I have this new program coming out called Herbs for Balance. So we're going to. But um, the thing is that um, we were supposed to launch it in July and I've decided against it because it's summer and, um, and it's not a best time to launch a new program. And so I pushed it to September. So look out for that. There's going to be a lot of great recipes uh, like that. Once I said, I'm going to try this. Great. Um, yeah. And another question I have for you, what would you want me to make or show you something you've been curious about uh, next week? Because I don't really have anything planned out yet. I typically wing it and kind of come up with an idea a day or two before the call. Uh, a lot of times it's because you guys make comments, like somebody said, I don't like coconut milk. So I thought, oh, I'm going to show you how to make something that's not um, coconut tea. Renee is saying, thank you. I'll try this for sure. Great. I'm glad you would. That's such a really good drink. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of ladies are gonna, Andrea is saying she's gonna try that as well. That's great. So let's see what questions. Robin uh, is gonna try that as well. Let's see what other questions do we have coming or questions do you have for me? And if you're new to this, um, watch the Cooking for Balance workshop, cookingforbalance.com. That's really where I explain the connection between gut health, liver, sugar levels as a foundation of your hormonal health. It's actually quite amazing. Sometimes you don't need to go after specific herbs for, you know, like black cohosh for hot flashes or all you do is just rebalance your sugar levels and things just go away um, really quickly, like hot flashes, for example. Hot flashes actually are the result of fluctuating sugar levels, for example. So if you learn to rebalance your sugar levels, a lot of the hot flashes will actually start going away, which is, I know, very liberating for those ladies who are struggling with that. Okay, so I've missed all your questions. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go uh, on later online and answer them. So if you don't have any more questions, I'm gonna call it a wrap. Had a long four days, so I'm gonna get prepped up for the weekend. I love good breakfast ideas that are easy, you make it easy to digest, dairy and gluten-free, high in protein, good fat, help to elevate estrogen dominance and stimulate thyroid. Okay, let me think of something. That's a good idea. I've been extremely sick since last Friday, coughing ears and throat. All bad. Any idea to help? Wanda is saying. So Wanda, obviously your immune system, we need some support, right? Um, you know, on one hand, you definitely want to eliminate everything that's um, suppressing your immune system. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that would be things like um, dairy, gluten, you know, eliminate those sugar is a huge immune system suppressant. So I would, I would recommend to get rid of all of those. On the other hand, you want to bring in things that really support things like the mushrooms I talked about, bone broth, make some bone broth. Um, you know, these things are so incredibly healing. Um, one of the things that is very, you said coughing and wheezing and, and sneezing, regarding glutathione, what dosages do you recommend? Um, so, Greta, is it? Yeah, Greta. So, Greta, if you're talking about glutathione from the cordyceps, then it's a teaspoon, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. If you're doing glutathione like in a, in a liposomal uh, form, which is the recommended one today when you put it under your tongue and you know, keep it there and let it absorb and stuff. The manufacturer will tell you how much because it really depends on the manufacturer. And that's, those are really good ones that are in a liquid form. You put it in your mouth, under the tongue, um, the liposomal um, glutathione. So just follow the recommendations of the manufacturer of how much to use. And if your doctor prescribed it, like if you have MTHFR, you might want to double that dose. Um, yeah. So, awesome, so I will think of a breakfast idea. Thank you for, for that suggestion. I think that's a good one because we haven't made a breakfast together. Yeah, there's a lot of breakfast ideas in the Cooking for Balance program, uh, but I haven't made one yet. So that was a great idea. I will definitely do that. Um, if you're spotty, can you please post? Okay, well, there must be the internet. One more thing I wanna just mention. Uh, yeah, so, so somebody was asking about the immune system. One more thing I just wanna mention before we wrap up today. There's this old Polish remedy that is a natural antibiotic, it stinks, but it works. And that is juice and onion and garlic. And you, literally you just take an onion and a, one onion and, a, and a, a head of cloves, right? A garlic cloves, put it through a, 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 a juicer. And I have to tell you, and so, and you do that with, after a meal, don't put it on an empty stomach because it's gonna make you really, really nauseous. And if you do a tablespoon of that every two, three hours after, you know, it doesn't have to be a full meal, but just put something in your stomach, like a piece of gluten-free toast or, you know, have something, right? Especially carbohydrates to absorb. And I have to tell you, within a day or two, you, you're going to feel an incredible difference. Both of the onions and garlic are huge in, um, you know, natural antibiotics, antimicrobial in every way. And on top of that, they're also full of sulfur, which really helps to stimulate your liver. Um, so really great support. I have to tell you, every time I feel like I'm coming down with something, that's my go-to little remedy, and it works every time. I have bad memories of it because my mom used to make us do it when we were kids, and then you go to school and people go like, oh my God, you smell. But, but you know, it really, really works, and so I highly recommend it. All right, you guys, uh, thanks for sticking around with me on a Friday afternoon, and um, have fun making these beautiful elixirs. And I'll talk to you next Friday where most probably I'm going to be showing you how to make a really nice breakfast recipe that's full of protein, fat, and fiber. Okay, bye for now.